Hey guys, today I am going to answer the question, is this the worst time to sell, the best time to sell, or what you should do with your collection? So I have liquidated what I wanted to liquidate. I've kept what I wanted to keep. So I feel very comfortable now speaking the truth. Now, one of the things that you have to realize is, yes, tax season, before everyone gets their tax refund, people are not going to have money to buy magic cards. They spent all their money in Christmas and during the holidays, and there's just not much money. There's not much demand right now for cards. Now, reserve list, standard, um, I would highly advise you not to invest in standard. I don't think anyone should invest in a standard product, even if it is called a collector's box. Booster boxes are notoriously difficult to sell. And even if you do sell it, there's a very high probability, probably I, in my experience, 5 to 10%, where someone returns the product, they opened it, they resealed it, and now they want a refund, or maybe they don't even return a product at all. Oh, it's impossible to prove, for the most part, that you sent an unopened box online. Uh, it happens at Walmart a lot. People will buy product from Walmart. Walmart will then, you know, they will open the product at home or in their car. They'll take out the, uh, the good cards. They'll glue it back together and they'll return it to Walmart via customer service. Customer service doesn't understand better. So they'll either sell it to me, which is really awful. And again, one of the reasons I no longer buy magic cards from Walmart from a distributor level, because I saw this happen time and time again. And the collector's editions were one of the most common. So between the collector's editions and the ED8s decks, because there's guaranteed value, right, in ED8s, and the collector's edition, even though there's not guaranteed value, you're still getting $27, $26 of value, which then you take the most valuable card. And, yeah, it's pretty good for a pack of cards, right? So in my opinion, uh, selling holding standard boxes when I don't really believe that standard will be played physically in the next five, 10 years. I just cannot see a, why they would not promote MTG Arena even more than they have today because their investors want an eSport. Their investors want digital. I don't, if you gave the Hasbro investors the option of, hey, do you want Magic the Gathering to be digital and be like League of Legends and eSports? They would be like, yep. Or do you want them to focus on paper magic in a local game store? Mm, nope. Let's do esports, guys. And that's what the CEO has. That's what every single report points to is they're moving away from paper magic for standard. And once uh, MTG Arena has modern or historical, or it has historic, modern or pioneer, then that's the uh, death rattle, right? So focusing just on, also, yeah, I'm going to show you the Rudy. I think Rudy's videos are a really good indicator of how things are going because he's very good at gauging the temperature of MTG Finance. And obviously Reddit is not his biggest fan, but when I look at Reddit and look at his videos, even the title of the video, you don't even need to really watch the video, but you can look at the title of the videos and figure out what's going on. So Secret Lair, I did watch that video, and he is concerned that there's so many new products coming out, and he's not making money from them because they're being so direct to consumer. I think that's the way it should be for every product. I think booster boxes should be so direct to consumer for whatever, 80 bucks on Amazon, something like that. I, I don't really see the point... So having a local game store is because you're saying, hey, you know, we're giving you uh, a license to make money from us just as long as you, you know, have a play area because you have to take pictures, right, to be a WPN. You have to take pictures of the bathroom and where the players will be and the parking lot and your store to get the maximal benefits. But I just don't see a scenario where people want paper magic in standard anymore. I just made a few videos about this uh, Piper Rat, like Swarm Piper. And it has like eight versions of it. 
And the first time it ever was released was Throne of the Eldraine. So in the last 90 days, there has been just promos and not even promos. I mean, just the collector's case has a bunch of edition versions of it already. That's a nightmare for a that's a nightmare for a store that has to that's a small local game store because they have to carry eight different versions or because you know customers are picky I can tell you that much they're very picky so in my opinion um, it is quite interesting um, to see Rudy say he doesn't want to sell Pharos the regular booster box which he has not yet which is surprising because he could probably still sell it and make money In my opinion, you have to break it down into various components. So standard, I don't think anyone should be investing in standard, no matter what it is. Uh, I, I just don't see standard ever being a very pop, like not popular, but very, I cannot see a spike in standard making people money anymore. The data is too good. It's updated too regularly. So everyone knows and everyone has internet now and can buy things instantly. And these sets are not very good. Pharos is not very good. And when you really want to get down to it, the land, the land suck. It's always a land. Conjure Tarkir is a terrible set, but it has fetch lands. RTR could have been one of, I mean, it has shock lands. So in terms of sets that have done very well, unless it's unique like the new Phyrexia or Innistrad, you're looking at the land base. I just don't see people playing Paper Magic for Standard when there's a better alternative in MTG Arena. Now, what Rudy is suggesting is you buy cards at low, which is true. So no one, I'm, no one I think, would contest that this is a low for Magic the Gathering, and we do expect a rebound sometime in April when people get their tax returns, when everyone gets their tax returns. So they can buy a luxury or a use their dis. Now they have more disposable income for their hobbies, which would also include Magic the Gathering. What I would contest is Rudy gets his cards at really low prices. And I think the cards that he recently bought were from Dave and Adams. He bought like some a case of uh, Onslaught, which Dave and Adams had for sale. And he bought uh, the graded cards, which Dave and Adams has a lot of graded cards for sale. Now, if you buy enough, you can talk directly to the one guy via his email. If, you, if you're actually serious about buying like a few thousand dollars, I'll give you his email. And then basically you just negotiate with him. I know a lot of uh, his non-magic products in the past. Nightmare Before Christmas, Dragon Ball Z. I believe a lot of the Buddy Fight, uh, even though maybe Car Fight Vanguard. It, Dave and Adams is where he... So it's not like he has a super undercutting distributor i mean i buy from david adam you can buy from david adams too and if you buy like over a thousand dollars you email this one guy and he gives you more discounts so i think it comes to price if you're buying bgs 9.5 magic card old legends card for 29 dollars, that's a good deal because it costs 20 25 dollars to grade and it takes a long time to get the graded card back so someone definitely lost a ton of money grading these cards that are no longer worth any money. I just think it is a little deceptive because what Rudy buys a card at or what he buys a case at is very different from what you buy a case at. And even I think he says that they pay for his credit card fees as well. So he gets his bonus points and they the uh, seller pays credit card fees. So they're... The seller is really losing a ton of money when you calculate it all together. The one thing I will say about um, this whole kind of buy sell is you got to do what you personally want to do. I personally know that in April, probably my cards will go up, and I kept my Pioneer. I kept Pioneer, I kept Modern, I kept Commander, but I, and EDH obviously. But I did not want to hold on to so much of it. Um, I just had too much to make me feel comfortable. So I'm willing to take a loss right now and not and have better sleep at night. 
and that was my decision. So I even left YouTube for a week and deleted a ton of videos because um, I didn't want the deals to go aw awry, if you understand what I mean. You know, like let's say I was trying to sell cards to a non-binary and they went on my channel, they would be very upset. And I was like, oh no, I mean, I gotta try to hit everybody. I gotta sell cards to everybody, trans, non-binary, binary, cis, quadruple lip whatever like new terminology people are using now. I even have to sell to, uh, what's it called, TERFs, right? Oh, trans rights, exclusionary feminist. At, at that point, I was like, I don't care who buys this crap. I just got to get rid of it. And I just knew that like I would feel so much better. So did I sell for a good price? Yeah, and the majority of it, I would say 80% of it was sold to my friends. So they got a really good price on cards that they've always wanted complete EDA stacks nonetheless 12 completed EDA stacks I sold that was heartbreaking because uh each of those I mean I'm always ha I used to always be so happy when an EDA uh, person wanted to sell me their EDA stack because it's just so hard to like put together 100 cards that make sense uh, so I so it's a good thing that they weren't taken apart and buy listed it because a it wouldn't be very value wise and b that's just sad to see that so in my opinion, it you know you gotta sell to make. I, I just wouldn't buy. I think the I, at most I would hold. I would hold now if you can buy at Rudy prices, which is like fifty percent, sixty percent off. Then yeah, you can make money because you can flip it instantly. You can flip it the next day. Right. So if you can buy, let's say a. I don't know what you want to buy. Collector's edition of Pharaohs for $100. Uh, okay, you can sell it for 170 180 and then you pay. you can sell it for 200 after eBay fees and other things and your own time that you calculated. You're still going to make money. So the, the dirty secret that no one tells you is it doesn't matter what you sell the cards. It's so hard to sell cards and make money. But if you buy the card low enough or the booster box or whatever you're buying low enough, that's the secret. It, the game is over before it's even played, if you understand what I'm saying. Whether or not you made a sound financial decision was not based on the sell price. It's always based on the buy price. Hi, guys.